there have been some rough boss fights in recent memory. Whether it's story bosses requiring a tacit understanding of mechanics, or optional bosses that feel straight up unfair. While there's fun in the challenge itself, these bosses were simply overwhelming, even if they eventually fell. Let's look at 10 recent bosses that made you work for that win. Crucible Knight Ordovis, Elden Ring. The Crucible Knights are some of the most deceptively tough bosses in Elden Ring. They seem like your usual armored enemies and suddenly unleash ground stomps, sprout wings to rush you, and even attack with tails. So how annoying would it be to fight two at the same time? As it turns out, very. Crucible Knight Ordovis is tough enough on his own, and it doesn't help that there's a regular Crucible Knight with a spear that can deal immense damage even with basic attacks. It even has a grab that can chunk half of your health. It's hard to find an opening, and even when you defeat the regular Crucible Knight, Ordovis still deals tons of damage and will relentlessly unleash skills as his health dwindles. Callus, Legendary Campaign, Destiny 2 Lightfall. If you are playing through Lightfall's admittedly underwhelming campaign, you probably won't have that much trouble when finally defeating Kalos. However, on Legendary difficulty where the radar is disabled, enemies have more health and are more aggressive and tougher to stun with various shields. Your power is also capped at 15 levels below, so you'll deal less and take more damage. Did I mention the Tormentors and their annoying attacks? Or the one Shadow Legion Flamer that pushes you off the map easily? Or Kalos's dumb Orbital Strike? Or the second phase where you have little room to maneuver, or even how you have to do it all over again if you die? Strand makes this somewhat more manageable, but even with Starfire Warlock, Necrotic Grip plus Osteostriga, plus Weaver's Trance, Volatile Rounds, and a lot of patience, it took way too many attempts to finally beat Kalos. Lu Bu, First Fight, Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Team Ninja's Wolong Fallen Dynasty is probably a little easier than its previous games, but that doesn't mean Lu Bu isn't a complete nightmare to fight. Your first encounter with him is at the Battle of Hulogan Pass, where he fights on horseback. This introduces a unique dynamic. You can't perform critical strikes while he's riding around. You have to reduce his spirit and knock him off. He'll begin recovering on the ground while his horse runs around, sometimes attacking. As for Lubu himself, he can unleash ranged attacks with a bow, a powerful flaming spear attack, and a leaping overhead smash. You could bring allies in, but they'll quickly fall, and reviving them is nearly impossible due to Lubu's aggression. Being defensive, countering his critical strikes, and being measured damage is ultimately the key to beating him, but it can take several tries. Death Haze Gloombeak Wild Hearts Wild Hearts, Omega Force's next-gen hunting game, had several tough bosses at launch, from Golden Tempest to Amaterasu. However, it only upped the ante with its post-release kimono, especially Death Haze Gloombeak. This deeply volatile variant specializes in poison, so you'd think it would just be a swipe, bite, and fly around, right? Wrong. It doesn't just dive bomb, but also drills the ground with a spinning attack. It can also rush and leave poison trails, spit out projectiles that split into poison tornadoes in every direction, and casually spin like a top while trailing even more poison. For those seeking a challenge, Death Haze Gloombeak is where it's at. Omega Pirate Metroid Prime Remastered If you don't know what to do, Omega Pirate can be one of the most frustrating bosses in Metroid Prime. Along with having resistance to beam weapons, it often summons plasma troopers to disrupt you when its weak points are destroyed. It will then go invisible and heal as you deal with the riffraff. The best way to deal with it is through power bombs and super missiles, and you'll go through most of them before it's finally dead. Not knowing how to stop its recovery or deal with its troopers turns this into an overly long ordeal. Super Cena WWE 2K23 when playing through WWE 2K23 Showcase Mode, you're doing so from the perspective of legendary superstar John Cena's opponents. It's essentially a recreation of the icon's long-running career, specifically the losses, because Cena never lost that often. However, eventually you'll encounter a major curveball, 
and battle Cena himself. That is the most powerful version of Cena with a 100 overall rating, Super Cena, who you can't see. Thankfully, his merch is still visible, so the match isn't impossible. However, he is the strongest wrestler in the game and can drop you without much trouble. You'll need to bust out your best reversals and combos and maybe even cheat to beat him. Or pick Roman Reigns, the second highest rated superstar in the game and smash hustle, loyalty, and respect once and for all. Either way, it's a hilariously unexpected challenge. Duo X, Mega Man Battle Network 4, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection revives the classic card-based action RPG franchise for a new generation, packing 10 classics into one package. However, it also reaffirms the immense difficulty of some of these bosses. Duo X from Mega Man Battle Network 4 is a good example. As an alien program, Duo is all about destroying evil, so naturally he wants to wipe all the Earth, predictably, understandable, perfectly understandable even, all things considered. He fires missiles, sometimes paired with mines, sends fists raining down on the player's side and cracking the field, making it tougher to move around, fires a massive laser, and so much more. Even worse, he gains more health and elaborate patterns at higher difficulties. In fact, after collecting seven special icons, his Omega form, which deals more damage, will serve as the default no matter the difficulty. Gna, God of War Ragnarok. What happens if the old Valkyrie Queen goes up against the new one? What if Freya were to fight against Gna? Whatever the case, you'll still need to do a lot of the heavy lifting as Kratos. Much like Sigrun in God of War 2018, Gna is the hardest boss fight in Ragnarok, dealing immense damage, having tons of health, and shaking off your hardest hitting attacks like it's nothing. She has numerous unblockable attacks, including two grabs, which are insta-kills, gains runic armor to prevent staggering, and can launch bitfrost and projectiles that linger on the ground. While several moves will be familiar to anyone who had fought the Valkyries in previous games, Gana takes it to another level and is an absolute nightmare to fight on harder difficulties. Yang, Sifu. As the leader, Yang is the final boss and the toughest fighter in Sifu. While other fights may have felt like dances where you alternated back and forth between attack and defense, Yang encourages heavy defense. This is due to the sheer power of his attacks. Once your structure is gone, it's all over, at least until reviving. You need to be extremely good at blocking and dodging his attacks. Of course, you can't be too defensive since Yang's structure will heal over time if given a chance. Also, you can't use focus attacks, which further stacks the odds against him. The second phase is easier, but if you're going to get the true ending, things can get even trickier when Yang takes the talisman, eliminating any chance of reviving. Tremor Tusk, Horizon Forbidden West. Burning Shores offer some tough machines to fight, including the new Bile Gut, but it's hard to top the game's base game's Tremor Tusk baddie. A new version in the open world has a whopping 5,000 HP and can soak up tons of damage without too much trouble. On top of having a flamethrower in the front, it can also throw flaming rocks, unleash a barrage with its plasma cannons, and generally stomp you into the ground. Even if you gain some distance, it has plenty of long-range weaponry to track you down. Perhaps the only real weakness of the Tremor Tusk is its slow speed, but even then, it can suddenly rush you down. And that brings us to the end of the video. A quick request, we upload new videos every single day, and if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Also, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon so that you can receive daily video updates. Thanks for watching.